Alright, this one's been sitting here long enough. Let's try it. What is going on everyone? Welcome to the video. So I'm going to try a new flavor of Halo Top. You saw the one it is. That's green tea. It's honestly been sitting in my freezer for a couple of months. I have not been very excited to try it. I'm not a green tea fan. I was going to like just give it away or throw it out, but I did read some good reviews on it. So I figured, you know what, I'm going to try it. I put it in the microwave. You should have to microwave it. It's ready now. going to go grab it. Anyway, if you had never had Halo Top before, you either have to let it sit out for like a half hour or microwave it for like 30 seconds. So I microwave it for 30 seconds. So this one's called Moki Green Tea. Again, I am not a green tea fan. I'm looking at this and I'm like, what am I doing? But every Halo Top flavor that I've been skeptical of, skeptical, skeptical of, I've actually ended up enjoying it. So let's try it. Uh, let's try that again. Alright, so overall, it is creamy, I'll give it that. I don't really taste green tea. I don't really know what I taste, to be honest. Definitely not my favorite flavor. It's definitely not terrible. I probably wouldn't get it again, but that's my review, I guess. So, uh, out of 10, 6 out of 10, it's probably my least favorite flavor. But again, I'm gonna be able to eat this. It's not, it's not bad. And there's chunks of something in here. Let me try that. Hmm. There's chunks of like, I wanna say mochi. I don't really know what that is, but those are pretty good. Overall, six out of 10. Not my favorite flavor, but uh, maybe you'll try it. I just had it sitting in my freezer for too long, so had to get it out of there. So anyway, I'm gonna eat this, and then I'm gonna take you guys through my latest uh, lower strength workout. What is going on everyone? Welcome to the workout. So this is my latest lower strength workout. And if you did see my last video, which was an upper strength workout, I talked a bit about how my approach to these strength days is changing. Uh, and let me go over a little bit more here just in case you missed that. So what I was doing on these strength days uh, prior to this, I was working in the three to five rep range I would basically start one week at like three reps, I'd go to four reps, five reps, and then would bump up the weight by five pounds and go back to three reps. And what I was noticing was that my body was kind of giving me some signals telling me, hey Adam, what are you really doing here? You're not really necessarily trying to get stronger. You're not really trying to get bigger. You are trying to stay lean, which means you're a little bit more susceptible to injury. So do you really think it's the smartest idea to really be lifting as heavy as you possibly can at this point? And I started thinking about it and, you know, I realized my body was giving me some signals that maybe it wasn't the best idea to push the weight as much. I tweaked my back a couple of times. Uh, I was feeling a little, uh, nothing serious, but I was feeling some things that I, that I know I never felt in the past. And a lot of us, myself definitely included, I don't really make a change until I'm forced to make a change. And I didn't want to be the guy that was, that it herniated a disc and couldn't go to the gym and couldn't squat or deadlift for six months and then look back and say, wow, I really shouldn't have done, um, I really shouldn't have lifted so heavy. So I decided to be smart about it. And even though that they might have never come, I didn't want to risk it. I feel good right now. I want to stay feeling good. I want to lift for a long time. I'm, I'm in this for the long run. And I'm just deciding to be a little bit safer. So having said that, I'm not lifting light anymore. I mean, you just saw I did 315. So basically what my approach is, I, I warm up uh, with 275 for my first set. I don't really want to say warm up. So I use 275 for eight. That kind of warms up my body, gets me a little bit looser. I then went up to 295 for six. Before I went into the top sets that you see here, I did 315 for two sets of four. Now, 315 is definitely not crazy heavy for me, but it's also never been a light, it's never been lightweight for me. 315 is still a weight that I get nervous to do. When I put it on my back, it feels relatively heavy, and I do have to like get myself mentally prepared for it. So don't get me wrong, 315 is still relatively heavy for me, but I do feel that at this point, since I'm not necessarily really trying to get much bigger, I'm not really trying to get much stronger, I do think if I just do two sets of like 315, 
at about four reps. I do think that's enough for me to at least maintain the strength I have and not lose strength. And I think it's a safer way for me to not get injured. So after I did those two sets of 315, I did back it back down to 275. And I did a set of 10 there. And again, overall, the goal is really just to, to feel the weight, get a couple of heavier sets in, but not too crazy heavy, just enough to really maintain the strength I have and not get injured. So I hope by me saying that, you, don't, you guys don't think any, any less of me, like, oh, he's not lifting heavy anymore. It's not that really that I'm not lifting heavy. It's more that I'm just trying not to be stupid. So, I mean, again, 315 isn't light. I mean, like I said, I still get scared to do 315. Um, so it's just, a, it's just a different approach that I'm taking. Um, same thing with deadlift. So I was on deadlift doing all four of my sets at like a, a heavier weight. And now I work up to four or five. That's the heaviest I go. And I just do one set of four. Here you see I'm doing 365 for eight. And don't underestimate 365 for eight. Eight reps on deadlifts of any weight is actually pretty difficult. And this is not easy. But what it does do is kind of warm up my entire body so that when I do get to the four plates, it doesn't feel like I'm putting like any, any like, it doesn't look like I'm, it doesn't feel like I'm putting my body at any risk for injury. Everything's loose and ready to go. I do that one set at four or five. That kind of feels like enough to really maintain my strength. And then I actually did a back down set at 335. I was going for 10, but after these first three sets, 10 was just not happening and I ended up doing eight and that was a really good um, set. So. Overall, it was a really good workout. I didn't do as many heavy sets, but I don't really think that's, that's necessary uh, for me at this point. So again, hope you guys don't think anything less of me. I'm just trying to train smart. I really do want to be doing this for the long run. I don't want to, I don't want to be laying in my bed um, like a lot of bodybuilders you see who go too heavy, they get too stupid, and now they walk around the gym giving advice to young people saying, I shouldn't have lived so heavy when I was your age. I just, I just don't want that to be me. So. Um, title of the video was, do you have to squat and deadlift? And the short answer is no, you don't have to do any exercise. There's always a replacement for exercises. Having said that, I do not think you're ever going to find a better replacement for squats and deadlifts. So squats, you could replace a little bit more easily than deadlifts. You could do leg presses, you could do hack squats, you could do lunges. Granted, none of those exercises, in my opinion, are as effective as squats but at least those exercises still train the same muscles as squats. So if you can't squat for any reason, you, you don't lose too much by doing those. However, deadlifts are a different story. Deadlifts are awesome for your entire back, your traps, your glutes, your hamstrings. If you don't deadlift, if you wanna replace uh, deadlifts and hit all those muscles, you need to do like five exercises. You need to do something with traps, so you only need to do like shrugs, you need to do something for back thickness, so you have to do rows. You have to do something for hamstrings, so either Romanian deadlifts, which are still deadlifts, so you might as well just deadlift, or, or something, or like glute ham raises. You need to do something for glutes, so like glute ham raises or, or hip thrusts. So it's like, to, to replace a deadlift, there's so much that you have to do. And even if you do all those replacement exercises, in my opinion, you're still not hitting the muscles that they replace as effectively as a deadlift. So. If you can deadlift, I would definitely deadlift. If you have an injury preventing you from doing that or squats, well then obviously don't do either of them. But if you're just not deadlifting because you're, you've convinced yourself that you don't have to and that there's other exercises that are better, well, I disagree. I don't think you could ever replace a deadlift. Again, you could do what I'm doing and not necessarily deadlift as heavy, go lighter. You're still getting a, a good workout but you're not ever going to replace deadlifts with anything that's better in my opinion. And I have trained for several years at a time not doing squats or deadlifts, and I have trained for several years at a time doing both of them. And I can honestly say my back, my legs, everything that those two exercises hit have been significantly better at the times that I've incorporated those exercises. My back, my hamstrings, and my glutes have all been the best they ever have in the last two and a half years deadlifting consistently as opposed to before when I didn't do them. So if you can do them, I certainly recommend it. This workout is wrapping up with these abs here. If you guys enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up. I appreciate it and I'll see you in the next one.